blue crabs retain the strongest links to their marine past. They have fully developed gills and carry reservoirs of water under their shells. Alongside them live crabs so perfectly adapted to life on land that they can no longer survive in water. Robber crabs are powerful enough to tear open fresh coconuts with their claws. They have legs as long as a child's arm and are the most colossal land crabs on earth. But big as they are, robber crabs do not dominate the forest floor on Christmas Island. That distinction belongs to red crabs. Red crabs dominate through sheer numbers. There are between 80 and 120 million of them living on this small island. And their burrows are everywhere. As they dig their burrows, in their slow, methodical way, they cultivate the forest floor, tilling the soil, aerating and replenishing it. These small ecosystem engineers also recycle and remove debris. They eat leaf litter, seeds and seedlings, excreting it as nutrient-rich deposits. The whole of the rainforest's well-being rests in the claws of these small but consummate gardeners. But once a year, a powerful call draws them back to the ocean that they once emerged from. That call comes with the first of the monsoon rains. Frigate birds nesting close to the clifftops are the first to feel the cooling drops. As the rain reaches the forest floor, it triggers a flurry of activity among the red crabs. They start to move, slowly, in small numbers at first. But within a few hours, the movement has spread around the island and the annual migration back to the ocean is underway. It will be a journey fraught with danger. As the crabs move coastward, the rain stops. But there's no turning back. They continue on, risking dehydration beneath the hot, tropical sun. In an effort to conserve water, they journey in the early morning or late evening, moving from shade to shade if they can. But there's one place that offers no shade, only danger. Roads crisscross the island, and most migrants must cross at least one. Red crabs are cannibals and eat fallen companions. For these gardeners are also meat eaters and will dispose of any carrion in the forest. But beyond the road, they face a far more serious and sinister threat. Crazy ants. The ants attack, finding chinks in the crab's seemingly impenetrable armor. They have no defense against the ferocity of the onslaught. Ants target the crab's vulnerable points, the eyes and the mouth.
They swing their abdomens forward, spraying deadly jets of formic acid. The acid attracts still more ants. Escape is impossible. In an effort to flush out the burning acid, the crabs force moisture through their gill openings. It creates a mass of froth, but it's a futile attempt at self-preservation. It only dehydrates and distresses them, and they slowly die. Crazy ants killed an estimated three million red crabs in one year, and now scientists are investigating how to stop the ants. The task for Dennis O'Dowd and Peter Green is daunting. Crazy ant colonies are spreading at the rate of up to three meters a day around the island. The tiny invaders seem unstoppable. Yeah, crabs have been dying here for a while. This one, a bit pale and it's starting to break up. And to add, on, add insult to injury, you quite often find ant nests inside the old carcasses. Whatever plan the scientists recommend, the job of putting it into action will go to Parks Australia. Park manager Max Orchard and his team are responsible for the maintenance of the national park that covers two-thirds of Christmas Island. Tree falls are relatively common, and any that block roads or tracks are cleared away immediately. This large trunk will be difficult to move, so they decide to split it lengthways first. But in doing so, they make a startling and chilling discovery. Within a hairline crack of this healthy trunk is a large nest of yellow crazy ants. The worker ants rush to rescue the exposed larvae and bundles of egg masses. A single colony may have hundreds of queens within it. What makes crazy ants such formidable enemies is that each queen has the potential to start a new colony anytime, anywhere. But most alarming of all is that unlike many other ants, crazy ants aren't territorial. They cooperate with each other. What appear to be separate colonies is in reality a huge super colony that acts and works as one vast, slowly expanding army of devastation. To better understand the crazy ant offensive, scientists are trying to track the spread of the colonies. But parts of the rainforest are almost impenetrable and tracking them will be exceedingly difficult. Global Positioning System by Satellite, or GPS, okay. is one technique being trialled. Yeah, sure. But there's a problem. Even in the less dense areas, signals can't penetrate the forest canopy. Another solution must be found if the crabs and rainforest are to be saved. 